Hey everybody, this is Alchemist 2, and I'm back again with another book review. Light reading. <laughs> right. Anyway, um, this is definitely not light reading at all. <laughs> You've got about ah, five parts here. Part 1, The Edge of Knowledge. Part 2, The Dilemma of Space, Time, and the Quanta. Part 3, The Cosmic Symphony. Part 4, String Theory and the Fabric of Space-Time. Part 5, Unification of the 21st Century. And of course, this talks about supersymmetry and super string theory. Uh, and uh, it mentions that well-known illustration of uh, perspective concerning uh, five blind men in a room with an elephant, each of them describing what they feel. One of them says, oh, I feel a tree. Another one says, oh, I feel a snake. Of course, he's got a hold of the elephant's trunk. Oh, I feel something rough. Is this uh, sandpaper? Uh, oh, <laughs> I feel a rope. Might be the elephant's tail. Um, but only one of them, uh, if it were uh, a man who had been around elephants maybe before he was blind, that's always a possibility, but say, no, this is an elephant. <laughs> of course, you got five different, five, five different uh, vantage points from that, and uh, that's one thing that's really intriguing about physics in and of itself, whether it's quantum mechanics or uh, whichever. Uh, this has quite a bit of information in it about inflation of the galaxy, uh, Kabul-Yau galaxies which are coiled, and it talks about uh, M theory, which is multiverse theory. Which uh, the last book that I read by Michio Kaku uh, discussed that in depth, and it's absolutely fascinating. I thought uh, this has, oh, including the notes. It um, is about oh, 412, unless you want to go into the glossary, which is extremely helpful if you're not too familiar with uh, the realm of physics itself. This is very useful. There it is. Kalabiyao. Kalabiyao. I had mispronounced that. It's a shape, space, in, into which the extra spatial dimensions required by string theory can be curled up, like I said, consistent with the equations of, of the theory itself. Um, okay. Closed string, and that's a type of string that is in the sh shape of the uh, loop. Curvature, deviation of object or space time from a flat form, and therefore from the rules of geometry codified by Euclid. It talks about duality, which completely boggles my mind. Uh, it says, situation in which two or more theories appear to be completely different, yet actually give rise to identical physical consequences. Um, I've always loved the definition for event horizon. One-way surface of a black hole once penetrated, the laws of gravity ensure there is no turning back, no escaping the powerful gravitational grip of the black hole. Um, Stephen Hawking said that... Uh, not everything disintegrates. Uh, it might come out kind of like a crumpled mass of paper, which was uh, something that he had uh, theorized over time before he had said that, well, nothing will ever survive the uh, the force of uh, the whole itself when a piece of matter is going through it. But he thought to himself, I don't know if that's completely true. But see, this is all just... Um, Surmization, of course, because nobody has been through a black hole yet. Well, if they did, would they survive it anyway? That's the, that is the that is the ultimate question. That that's the one question I would love to have answered, honestly, because I would just think to myself, "Wow, this is completely <laughs> marvelous." But it flabbergasts me. It it agitates me. It adulates me. It uh, frights, frustrates me because I don't understand all of it, uh, and I have yet to completely get it. It's so far beyond me. Even 
even super uh, symmetry is beyond me. I understand symmetry is just uh, so above my comprehension. Uh, I wanted to read the the very last chapter because I thought oh this very last uh, part of the the book itself because I really feel that it's very inspiring what the, our author says, Ms. Uh, Dr. Green, who is a Rhodes Scholar and a physics teacher. Physic te physics teacher. <clears throat> this last part is called Reaching for the Stars. Although we are technologically bound to the Earth and its immediate neighbors in the solar system, through the power of thought and experiment, we have probed the far reaches of both inner and outer space. During the last hundred years in particular, the collective effort of numerous physicists has revealed some of nature's best kept secrets. And once revealed, these explanatory gems have opened vi vistas on a world we thought we knew, but whose splendor we had not even come close to imagining. <laughs> this is all true. One measure of the depth of a physical theory is the extent to which it poses serious challenges to aspects of our worldview that had previous previously seemed immutable. By this measure, quantum mechanics and the theories of relativity are deep beyond anyone's wildest expectations. <laughs> You're telling me. Wave functions, probabilities, quantum tunneling, and ceaseless roiling energy functions, fluctuations of the vacuum, excuse me, the sparing together of space and time, the relative nature of s simultaneous simultaneity, the warping of space-time fabric, black holes, the Big Bang. Who could have guessed that the intuitive mechanical clockwork Newtonian perspective would turn out to be so thoroughly pro-child that there was a whole new mind-boggling world lying just beneath the surface of things as they are, they are ordinarily experienced. But even these paradigm-shaking discoveries are only part of a larger, all-encompassing story. With solid faith that laws of the large and small should fit together in a coherent whole, physicists are relentlessly hunting down the elusive unified theory. Good luck with that. The search is not over, but though through superstring theory and its evolution to M theory, a cogent framework of, uh, for emerging quantum mechanics, general relativity, and the strong, weak, and electromagnetic forces has finally emerged. And the challenges these developments pose to our previous ways of seeing the world are monumental. Loops of strings and oscillating globules, uniting all of creation into vibrational patterns that are meticulously executed in a universe with the numerous hidden dimensions capable of undergoing extreme contortions in which their spatial fabric tears apart and then repairs itself. Who could have guessed that the merging of gravity and quantum mechanics into a unified theory of matter and all forces would yield such a revolution in our understanding of how the universe works? No doubt there are even grander surprises in store for us as we continue to seek a full and calculationally tractable understanding of superstring theory, which is what the entire book is about. Already, through studies in M-theory, we have seen glimpses of a strange new domain of the universe lurking beneath the Planck length, possibly one in which there is no notion of time or space. At the opposite extreme, we have also seen that our universe may merely be one of the innumerable floating bubbles on the surface of a vast and turbulent cosmic ocean called the multiverse. These ideas are at the current edge of speculation, but they may pres presage the next leap in our understanding of the universe. As we fix our sight on the future and anticipate all the wonders yet in store for us, we should also reflect. <laughs> he has a redundancy here. Oh, you silly, silly man. We should also reflect. It says reflect back, but it should be reflect. We should also reflect and marvel at the journey we have taken so far. The search for f the fundamental laws of the universe is a distinctly human drama. I like that phrase. One of the stretch the mind and enrich the spirit. Einstein's vivid description of his own quest to understand gravity. Quote, the years of anxious searching, searching in the dark with their intense longing, their alterations of confidence and exhaustion and final emergence into the light, end quote, encompasses surely the whole human struggle. We are all, each in our own way, seekers of the truth and we each long for an answer to why we are here. Also, I think that is 
absolute genius because I agree with that statement wholeheartedly. As we collectively scale the mountain of explanation, each gener generation stands firmly on the shoulders of the previous, bravely reaching for the peak. Whether any of our descendants will ever take in the view from the summit and gaze out on the vast and elegant universe with a perspective of infinite clarity, we cannot predict. But each, but as each generation climbs a little higher, we reach, we realize Jacob Bernowski's pronouncement that quote in every age there is a turning point, a new way of seeing and asserting the coherence in the world end quote. And as our generation marvels at our new world, a new verse, new view of the universe, excuse me, our new way of asserting the world's coherence, we are fulfilling our part, contributing to our rung to the human ladder of reaching the stars. And uh, that's the conclusion of the book. And I, I just thought that was <sighs> breathtakingly inspiring. Even if he made a redundancy, it doesn't matter. Um, it's just really a thought-provoking book. A lot of it went to uh, whoosh. <laughs> Way above my um, ken, <laughs> as I said, have said many a time. But it's truly a well-deserved read if you're um, if you're into quantum mechanics, quantum physics, uh, theoretical physics, and uh, any of the the possibilities and probabilities that are poised by any um, anything mentioned above, which to me it's a whole new world, literally, and it just gives new perspective to everything, the whole cosmos, and even our little macrocosm here on our little blue dot. But I I love this book, and I totally totally recommend it. Um, Brian Greene is just a fantastic author. So if you have a chance to read it, pick it up, um, even if it's a little bit dense, <laughs> go ahead and read it anyway. It might just challenge you to think a little bit differently. <laughs>